eight years ago, I opened up for the first time. I went to a workshop that got me to open up about sexual abuse. Yeah. For 25 years, I held on to the secret of mm -hmm. the shame. It's five years old when it happened. Mm -hmm. And in when I started to go to element, and when you're five and you're sexually abused or you're raped, you don't, at least for me as a boy growing up in Ohio, there was never like, talk about it you know there wasn't on tv or something of like okay if you're a young boy and this happens to you here's what you do next yeah i never saw this yeah and then when you get into like elementary school and middle school and i remember being a very affectionate young boy like i'd put my arm around like my classmates or like teammates and then they would push me off at different mm -hmm. times not everyone but they'd push you off and call you names almost like it was wrong right. to be affectionate with someone and so mm. I thought like, oh, I could never share this with my friends because if I even just put my arm around a guy, they're going to make me make fun of me and call me names. So how could I let them know that this happened to me when I'm not even accepted for just being playful? Yeah. So I just held on to it for a long time. And when I finally talked about it in a workshop, and I've talked about this publicly many times, I finally talked about it in a workshop, I had a fear of telling my family. I remember thinking, okay, I told these kind of like strangers in this emotional intelligence workshop and I'm never gonna see them again, mm -hmm. right? Maybe I will, but maybe not. They, you know, they all accepted me. Yeah. But then I was like, but my family, will they accept me, you know? Mm. And I remember talking to a therapist friend at the time saying, I'm really scared to share this with other people because what if my family doesn't accept me? Just like you were talking about reflecting it, sharing your shame and having someone reflect and accept yeah. you. I said, I don't know what to do. She said, call each one of them one by one because they were around the country. Call them and ask them this question first before you tell them and make sure you feel comfortable with their response. I was like, what's the question? She said, ask them, is there anything I could ever say or do that would make you not love me? Mm. And, and if they say, you know, yes, there are things that would make me not love you, then maybe don't tell them right then. You know, maybe wait to tell them. But if they say, no, there's nothing you could ever do or say that make me not love you, then they're giving you a permission to share that. Yeah. And I called each one of my family members and told them, and it was the most like healing experience for them to receive my shame. Mm. And also what tends to happen when one person's vulnerable is someone else opens up their vulnerabilities. Yeah. I learned something about each one of them I had no clue about. So our bond connected even stronger, mm -hmm. which is even more healing for them and more healing for me. And I think that's a powerful thing that a lot of people are not willing. And I was one of them for 25 years. I was not willing to reveal myself because I was so afraid of what people would think about me or judge me or make fun of me or not accept me or not love me if they knew the shame. And I'm trying to be to share more of this because I want people to, to open up. They don't need to tell the world like I do, you know, on a big platform, but it's the inner relationships that we have with people, the close relationships that are the most meaningful that we tend to hide ourselves sometimes. And I feel like we've got to learn how to be, make this more acceptable for people.